this is Tom, a.k.a. Gedeon here with Tabletop Taproom, and we have reached the end of a series with our very last Fanzine Friday for now. Uh, we could revisit Fanzine Friday in the future. Uh, I could see possibilities for that. But for now, we have finished the last Frontier Explorer number 36. Wow. Can't believe we've been at this for more than a year. So uh, let's get to it in a second here. I just want to say thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. Thanks to all the Star Frontiers fans out, that are out there. Uh, and if you've not subscribed, please do hit the like, subscribe, bell icon. Help me build the channel. It's appreciated. And here we go. Fancy number 36. Now this cover is a little bit bittersweet to me. I'd been thinking about this quite a bit, and I had this image for a cover, and I had actually uh, drawn a sketch, and it uh, wasn't coming together, and I came to a realization that if I really wanted this cover, it was gonna—I uh, was gonna have to commission it, and which is what I did. And this is inspired by Winslow Homer's "Breezing Up." I'm a fan of Winslow Homer. And uh, the ones, the original Winslow Homer image is there's like four boys in a uh, small sailboat. And, you know, it's at an angle and they're just kind of looking off in the distance as the boat's sailing. And it's, it's a great picture, uh, kind of famous. And uh, I, I just kind of felt like the Winslow Homer image was a metaphor to me because as we were coming to the conclusion of Frontier Explorer, I was thinking about that first year of the Frontier Explorer. And there were principally four people who were involved. I mean, other people did contribute a little bit, but there was principally four people that I had this sense between the four of us, we were a team. And so I really wanted this, this picture because uh, the core four, uh, frontier races are represented here, and each one of these uh, characters is somebody specific. You know, it was it was, it was a little bit bittersweet, and I just wanted this as a send off, as a uh, as a thank you, uh, in part to those uh, three other people who made this such a great experience for me to work on the Frontier Explorer, and. Um, you know, so it is a little bit bittersweet. So it is, is this is a special cover. Uh, and probably all we need to say about that. <laughs> um, moving right along, we have uh, Have Air Car Will Travel Part 2. This is Part 2 to Jerry uh, Boucher's uh, article on air cars. And he's done some more great artwork illustrating his, art, his uh, article. So it's just an equipment article. Um, great stuff to use. Hacker archetype. And again, I love the archetypes. So I, I wrote up a hacker archetype. It's not specifically tied to any one species, to the Azarians or draw, you know, it's anybody could be a hacker really. And so that was the focus. I didn't tie it to one specific uh, species. Uh, but uh, you have three character concepts within this, the black hat, the white hat. And then you just have the cybersecurity guy who's just in it for the money. It's not a bad guy. It's not a good guy. He's just, I'm just here doing this for the money because the organization pays me. And uh, then we had uh, domestic services PSA. This was written by uh, Stephen Parento. This is, um, this was about, um, cooks, butlers, servants in the frontier. And uh, so it's an interesting article, one page. Now the uh, Goliath bucket mouth crab of Loson, this actually sat in the submission queue for a long time. I'd done some artwork and surprisingly the artwork never made it in. It's, um, I think that was constraints of layout. I actually did a painting and scanned it, and then I did uh, some sketches, you know, uh, showing how the bucket crab uh, sucked in water and jetted it out the back to give it a, 
a kind of a sprint attack in the water. And uh, so, you know, the uh, it's too bad. The artwork just never made it in here. But uh, at any rate, this was a, a fun little creature, a little piece of uh, fiction, paragraph of fiction, really sets the tone for what this uh, creature is and how it is a, a potential ambush predator uh, source of a problem on Losen. Uh, review of Dark Colony. <laughs> and I say it's next level. Dark Colony is written by Tim Cask and company at his, um, what was the name of his company? Eldritch Enterprises. And uh, it was Tim Cask and uh, James Ward. I think Frank Metzer, uh, Christopher Clark were involved in that company. And there was a three module Dark this, dark that, dark. Dark Colony, I thought, was the first. It was like the third. So there's a whole Dark series. This was absolutely fantastic material. Th there was so much packed in here. This was this is a master class in writing and adventure. There was just so much material packed into this one module. And I absolutely thought this was, you know, just, you know, better than sliced bread and sliced butter. Uh, just absolutely fabulous. Uh, Infinite Shades of Grey. Sex, Spores, and Drolocytes. This is a, an examination of the uh, reproduction uh, and the gender identity within Drolocytes by Oscar Rios. Really interesting article. Um, Infinite Shades of Grey. You know, giving it a catchy little title there. It's, you know, just... Uh, Oscar with his sense of humor, but uh, definitely a, a, an interesting article expanding upon the uh, culture of drolocytes. Then we get into the alpha, the alpha to Z of frontier scanners. Now that title should clue, clue you in a little bit that what we're doing here is we're taking some of the, uh, uh, the CAS scanners, the CAS, uh, Computer Assisted Scanning, of Zebulon's Guide, because they were a little fiddly, and we're porting them over to kind of an Alpha Dawn mechanic, less Zebulon's Guide in their rules expression and more Alpha Dawn. And so this was just a review of what was there in the Zebulon's Guide and and uh, saying, all right, here's how we would just do this in Alpha Dawn. So that's a nice little article. And then <clears throat> we get into the Lion Class Frigate. This is the Steve Parento um, deck plan. And just bang up job done by him. Super thorough. I love this guy's deck plans. Uh, and it is very classic uh, Nighthawks Frigate matching the um, the miniature, the actual miniature that was produced. Now, I never liked the look of this miniature. I felt that, uh, you know, these ships should have the atomic drive, uh, you know, on it. That You know, this just looks like a chemical rocket at the back of it. So when I had a, a battleship, a UPF battleship miniature, plagued with lead, lead rot, but the engines were still good. There's like six engines. So I mounted two engines a piece on my frigates. They look much better that way. But uh, definitely, this is a great deck plan. And I love that he matched it to the actual miniature. Uh, expanded repair and maintenance rules for Nighthawk starships. This was a uh, alternate, um, you know, expanding the repair and the DCR rating. Um, for Nighthawk Starships, just an alternate rule system. Some great artwork we, uh, we recycled in here as well. And then another Steve Parenteau um, deck plan, the uh, Ajax class freighter, the glue that keeps the Federation together. This is a, a, a fresh look at the, uh, the small um, Nighthawks freighter that was in the Nighthawks, uh, uh, you know, box set and, uh, you know, fresh deck plan, fresh look at it. And, uh, you know, absolutely 
useful. You know, we've got some suggested crew. We've got one here, the SS San Dealer. <laughs> Harking back to Sanford and Son sitcom. I thought that was interesting. Digger shuttles. When you look at the Nighthawks um, rule book, you've got that section on um, running a commerce campaign with a mining ship. And I was looking at that, and I'm like, how do we go about this? We don't even have a deck plan for digger shuttles. I don't know that you need a deck plan, but um, you, this was an examination of the digger shuttles. Uh, if the digger shuttle was chemical drive, ion drive, or even atomic drive. And then it's an examination of running a commerce campaign, a mining ship commerce campaign. I suggest using these little, um, these little maps that came on the back of blister packs for the Nighthawks miniatures, for the TSR miniatures back in the day. These are colorized versions uh, of those maps. Somebody did, and to use them as as uh, just a quick little map of the engineering space in the orbital um, mining platform, the orbital processing, mineral processing platform, which you could strap onto a Nighthawk ship. So if you had a Nighthawks freighter with the orbital uh, processing platform there and uh, a digger shuttle, you could use the night the classic Nighthawks freighter as a mining ship. And so that was my base suggestion here with this and how to go about doing that. And uh, then we get a Richard Rose uh, deck plan. A lot of deck plans in this particular uh, issue. And the Richard Rose deck plan is the Akina class light freighter. So this is obviously a light freighter that can land on a planet. It's hull size four. It's got a nice sleek look and it comes with the deck plan. And so that's actually a really handy um, workhorse platform for a group of player characters to run around in. If you don't want to give them the heavily armed assault scout, this is a good option. Then hazardous environments. Now the hazardous environments series is something I started way back with, uh, you know, uh, about you know the dust, the hazards of, of the uh, lunar dust. It's very abrasive. Um, you know, what were the hazards of that? Hazards of water, heat. So I've examined over the, over the years um, vol volcanoes and lava. And this was looking at zero G where when you live in zero G, there is a loss of bone mass. There's a loss of muscle mass that happens. We know about this because of the astronauts on the International Space Station. So this was a just an examination of that and, um, you know, some plot hooks, some game plot hooks to go along with that. And then we get the Invasion of Gran Quivera Part 2. This is fiction piece from uh, uh, Rod McDonough, and uh, this follows the the, uh, the the part one, chapter one, I guess, that was previously published. And then you get endings and beginnings here. This is a personal letter from Tom Stevens to the, uh, you know, to the community, to the fans who read the magazine. And he published here a number of downloads on each magazine that we had. And uh, this is the end of the magazine. This was the... Um, and the final view back cover, an assault scout rocketing away. So this was Frontier Explorer number 36, deck plan heavy issue. And it was kind of more of a let's clean up what's still lingering in the submission queue and get it out there. And uh, anything that was left, we inherited, which really wasn't that much over here at, uh, at the uh, Star Frontiersman volume two. So uh, it was a great job. Tom did a great job. It was great working with him uh, for a decade on the Frontier Explorer. And uh, I had a lot of fun. And uh, that is Frontier Explorer. 
number 36. So this is Tom, a.k.a. Gerion here, signing out for Tabletop Tap Room and the Star Frontiers Gamer with our last Fanzine Friday, at least for a while. And uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the frontier. Thank <laughs> you.